to you. Today I'll be re reviewing Charlie Houston's Already Dead, Joe Pitts number one. This is actually part of a series that I found thanks to the author of Sam and Switzerland's Twitter. He actually really liked the series and I can kind of tell why I see similarities between this book and the Sam and Slim series. Um, I don't know if you can tell by the cover, but it's from a while ago, so I don't know if cigarette smoking on cover of a book would really sell that well to me, but um, Joe Pitts and James Stark have a lot in common. They're both anti seemingly anti-hero, anti-human, men on mission. So he's a vampire, so he's actually infected with a disease that forces him to have the need to drink blood or he will die. Um, that come from the town, the underworld, and there's the coalition which kind of keeps vampires under wrap. And as a vampire in Manhattan is supposed to work beside them and with them, and preferably belong to one of the clans, kind of like a gang. But Joe Pitts had them as previously. He did not like what it made, who they made him into. He kind of became a hitman for them, and he didn't like what he became. He was trying not to become a monster, and he wanted, wound up becoming one working for them, so he kind of left that behind, but he still has his ties to his past, so occasionally they come knocking and he has to help them, and that's what happens in this one. In book number one, Joe Pitts is assigned to find the poor little rich girl type who's run away from home in the midst of a zombie outbreak. What I find really interesting is apparently the author, after the series came out, he asked that people refer to her as pulp noir instead of just urban fantasy or whatever they were trying to label it as because he felt it was a bit grittier. Um, pulp noir has classic elements of noir. Um, but with more of an urban influence, I'd say. It's grittier and holier, and around every corner there's a crime or a vendetta. So I guess it's a lot like Sin City or Pulp Fiction. There was one part in the book he has a love interest, Evie. She's a bartender, and apparently he does have feelings for her. And a lot of vampires in books you know they're these very romantic and sensual. But in this book, um, Joe Pitts is kind of, he just seems like an average guy. He's not getting women left and right, and I really liked that. And he really did like Evie, and Evie really did like him, but there was something interesting there with she actually admits to him, and they talk about this, that she was she technically she has HIV, so she doesn't know he's a vampire, she doesn't think they can have relations, but she likes him, and he doesn't feel it's safe to tell her that he, what he is, and he knows that if he starts to try to have an intimate relationship with her, he will end up feeding from her, and he knows that that could cure what HIV, she would become a vampire, and he likes her enough, and he has mixed feelings about being what he is, so he decides not to tell her because she will want to be cured so they can have a, a relate an intimate relationship. And that's kind of, that kind of is really interesting to me because they basically have a tonic relationship, uh, like asexual. I thought that was really interesting and I've never seen that. In a, I've read some other, I used to read a lot of vampire books and there have been others where they couldn't have relations because they would end up losing control and feeding. But I've never seen anything like that. My thoughts on this are I definitely really liked it. I'm probably going to try to read at least the next one, if not the whole series. I think there's five in the series. Um, and I do think there's some unnecessary violence, um, and there was not a lot of getting to know the side characters in other series. I would feel like I was so invested in the characters right off the bat, and this one I really felt like I only got to know Joe Pitts. Um, but that's pretty common, and especially if you knew it was going to be a longer running series or a few books, I can see why. So hopefully in the next couple books I'll get to know Evie more, and as some of his friends they mentioned, it wasn't predictable at all. I think there might have been a slower part in the middle that I had to like kind of push through, but at the very end a lot happened. There is a lot of um, physical violence towards the end, there's a big fight, but in if you're going to be reading Pulp Noir, that's going to happen, so um, I would 
I would say that I really did. He makes a lot of references, just like Sam had said. There's a lot of pop culture, literary, just world references that you might get or you might not. But in this book, I got all of them, and the music ones are amazing. There's actually one part where there's a sexual encounter at two of Ramon's song, and it's just flat out hilarious. I laugh. They actually made uh, the We Hunger reference, and I just had to give author 10 points for that. It's amazing. I highly suggest that movie as well. If you like Sam and Slim, obviously, as I mentioned, if you like Dresden Files, if you like Urban Fantasy, Pulp Noir, Noir, I mean, you should give this a chance. Vampires, if you like a different take on vampires, I would say go pick out Charlie Houston's Already Dead, Joe Pitt's one. And hopefully you like it as much as me. I really enjoyed this and it was a really good summer read. So thank you for watching. If you go out in the sun, make sure to put on sunscreen, especially if you are a vampire. So see you next time, YouTube.